Hey everyone, Steven Jackson here from Imprintables Warehouse. This is another Corel Draw tutorial to show you how to take a bitmapped image, bring it into Corel Draw, and be able to extract a cut line around the outside of the image using some of the trace functions so that we could set this up to send over to VersaWorks to run on a Roland VersaCam or a BN20. So first off we have our open page here with nothing on it. We're going to import in that image so I can right click and import or again use the shortcut keys control I and we've got this runner for bruise logo here we're gonna drop that in the center and I can hit P and put that into the center of my page and F4 will zoom me in all the way on it so I can see it real nice there what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna copy that image so I'll hit control and C make a copy of it and I'll make another page by hitting the secondary page button down here and you can see we've got a new page set up I'll hit control V and that'll put my copy right in there. What we're going to use is Corel's auto trace functions and we're going to trace around it so we can get a rough edge of where we need around the outside of this. We'll use trace bitmap and outline trace and we'll call this one a line art. We're not co really concerned about all the total details on the inside of it but we're looking more for just the outer edge there so that we can set up a cut line. So I'll click on line art right there and I like using the wireframe overlay. There's a couple different previews you can do before and after. Shows the two and you can see the image cut out from around there. There is the large preview that puts it just the, the image itself and shows you what you're going to get done. The wireframe I, I find lets me see if it's missed something significant in there. So we can see that we've got our nice wireframe around here. Fairly good around the edges on the outside of it and that's what I'm looking for so I can set up my cut line in there. I can tell this to delete the original image right over here. I don't need that original image when we're done with this. We're just looking for the vector it creates so I can use that to set up a cut line. So I'll hit OK. I'm happy with these results. And there's my vectorized image. I can see it nice and smooth around the edges, vector image there. Everything right now is grouped and I can see that down here in group of 141 objects or if I went over to the uh, object manager I can see that it's a group of 141 objects and I don't have any of my welder trim functions up at the top here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and ungroup again shortcut control U and now since I have a whole bunch of different items you can see them listed all here you can see all the different nodes that came up I've got 141 objects down here selected in layer one and of course my weld trim and other functions have come up and we're looking for that one towards the end here the create boundary so I'll click on the create boundary creates a boundary around that whole object and if I were to move that aside, you can see the boundary that it created is a line that fits nicely around it. So we'll hit Control Z to put that guy back. And I'm going to right click over here. I've got my color palette open. I'm using Corel X5 that allows me to use Roland specific palettes. If you were in X4 or earlier, you would use the custom spot color palette and add in that cut contour line in there. So I'll right click on that one there. And now I've got an item that has no fill no fill I could left click in there and there's no fill it shows the no fill down here and 100% contour cut contour hairline I will hit control X or cut cut that out of there and I'll take this over to page one and hit control V and paste and if I zoom in I can see there's my nice cut contour line that goes all the way around the object if I wanted to maybe bring that in slightly just so that I've got a little bit of a bleed zone in this this item here so that I'm not going to have any white shown around there I can go over to my contour tool it's all the way down over here if your contour tool isn't showing up first off you can hit that little triangle on the side here and have that pop out and then you've got all the different items that you can pick from but we're looking for the contour tool right now once I've selected that it gives me a couple different options up here I have to the center to the inside or to the outside well we're going to do the inside because we're creating a bleed uh, a bleed cut line on an object that doesn't have a identical color all the way around the outside of it. So we'll click on the inside and I'll zoom in on this a little bit so I can see it better. And I can see I jumped in just a little bit there. I can get that maybe just a hair closer and that looks pretty good right there to me. I can adjust how far out it is, the offset there. Contours are a property of an object so it's still assigned to that that line that's, that we originally created out there. So I want to right click on this and sometimes you can gotta get right on that guy and break contour group apart it would have been much easier to use the control K key to break this apart once I do that I'll zoom out here by hitting F4 and that takes me to the full screen there 
and then I'll go back to my select tool, the pick tool here. If I come in and grab one of these lines, I can see that's the inside one there and I want to leave that one be, or I'll grab the outside one right there and I can just delete that. On my inside line here, now I need to make that 100% cut contour because it's 50% right now. So I'll right click on my cut contour color, zoom in and I can see that I've got the line right where I want it. Now I identified just an area right here where I've got a it's not quite smooth and when it's cutting that's just going to be kind of problematic. So I can go over to my shape tool and see all these little nodes right here. I don't need all these nodes. They're, they're kind of getting in the way. So I can get rid of a couple of those. Get rid of that guy there. Maybe take this one and make it to a line. That's a little bit smoother there. I can double click on the line and add a node there. And we'll subtract out that one and this one. And now it's a little bit smoother flowing into there. there. So it's not a sharp cut for the blade as it's going around on the, the design. This one right in here, I'll, I'll make an anchor node right there, double click, and that anchor line over the, that node right there will probably hold it pretty well for me, so I'll get rid of the rest in here, much smoother. So as you work with these graphics, you'll be able to identify these spots and see where they, they can kind of mess you up and, and, and be able to work with how to fix them. That right there is just a little bit, it's not quite if we look at the lines that bring that, see how they're crossing over there? That's why it's bubbling right there. So what I can do real quickly is turn that right click on it and make it to a line. And then right click on it again and make it to a curve. And now I can draw those out and smooth that in there if I wanted to. Maybe delete that. And that's a nice smooth line right there. So you always want to go through your graphic after you've done some auto tracing like this and take a look at it real quick. I can also go to View and Wireframe. And that sometimes it allows me to see it a lot better on there because I'm not having any interference with colors popping into my eyes or anything like that. So I can real quickly go around my design and there's another one that might be problematic or this one here. They're not too bad of issues on it and it depends on the size of the design. And that right there is a real mess. So we can double click on this and just take all those nodes right there. I'll select all of them and delete that and that did a pretty good job of bringing it around. So every once in a while you're going to get one that's easy to take care of like that. I've got a little issue right there. Get rid of that. That looks nice and smooth to me. And work your way around the design, finding any areas that could be problematic while it's cutting. Another one right here. Let's just try to delete some of these and see if we can make it fast. But see how it jumped out there? I went too far. So I'll hit Control Z. And I'll put an anchor node right there. Zoom in on this a little bit. And we'll get rid of all these guys here. And maybe that one there. And that smoothed it out fairly well there. So. It's just a process of going around it real quick, make sure that your graphic's set, and in a matter of, uh, we've been going less than 10 minutes here, and we've almost got this job done. I could have sent it to the printer and cutter already, even with all those notes like that, and probably been just fine. Uh, but I'm always trying to make it run a little bit smoother and better. So that's the finished graphic right there. We'll go back and view it in a regular mode. I've got my cut line, and I would just now save this as an EPS, or export as an EPS and then send that on over to VersaWorks to set up for printing and cutting. I hope this has been helpful for you and please let me know of any other videos that you folks are looking for out there. I'd be glad to get some up for you and I look forward to seeing you here next time. Thanks for stopping by.